Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Excalibur Data Systems Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson, and this is our special series, which is Slaying Dragons with Mike and Rob. And I'm joined by Rob Gogen from Excalibur. Rob, thanks for hey joining. Hey, everyone. Me. No problem, Mike. All right. So one of the ideas that Rob and I have behind Slaying Dragons is, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about process, you know, why process people and technology are important. Um, and, and other important topics. But we wanted to also start to pick apart the processes that many of us are using in IT every day. So we said, okay, hey, the first one we got to start with is incident and request management. Incident and request management being two sides of the same coin. Um, incidents being something is broken and generally is going to have a more urgent uh, time to resolve, whereas a request is I want or need something, um, and that's going to potentially have a different uh, path to resolution and, and, and time going with it. And there's a lot of components that make up incident and request management. So we, that was our idea. Let's kind of pick through these uh, and talk about it. So Rob, you had a great definition for what is incident. What is an incident? Yeah, so, so when you're looking at incident in particular, the formal definition is the disruption of or the degradation of the quality of a service. So not all incidents are a result of something suddenly not working, service delivery focused organization. It could be the degradation of that service to generate an incident. So it's not all clear cut on this is broken. It could be that this is not working as desired. So in, in that incident world, you know, it's kind of like we always equate it to firefighters and, you know, you have a big five alarm fire or you may have a little tiny grass fire, uh, but it, it really just depends. And when you're looking at incidents in particular, they're not all created equal and you have to take that into consideration. And that's where we tie those things back to what is the service? How does that in service impact our overall company revenue? How does it impact our employees or our customer experience? And then what's the impact and urgency and you tie into that, which then generates the how fast do I have to put this fire out and what does that look like? So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a typical incident, <clears throat> almost every organization you know, tracks these, um, uses some sort of system to track them, whether that's Outlook, um, not ideal, you know, all the way to uh, uh, ITSM, ESM, EXM type system that's going to track those incidents and requests. And almost everybody does it in a fairly similar fashion. They have most of the same components. Who has the problem? Uh, what is the problem? And what is the problem is a description of the problem and then usually a classification for reporting purposes and understanding impacts to services. Uh, and then m many organizations leverage an SLA um, that goes with that, along with a priority. Um, and you know, priorities are all over the map as to how you determine what the priority is. And you know, we're not here to be the priority police. Um, that's how your organization is set it up. But the priorities usually dictate your SLA or your resolve, response and resolve time uh, to that particular uh, incident or request. Now, an SLA by definition is an agreement with the external party as to how fast you're going to do things. Um, many organizations, that's not the case. Uh, it's it's not there's not a formal agreement in place, but we're leveraging SLA behavior to really track how we're doing versus how we feel we should be doing. What are our goals and our metrics? Um, and we'll do a whole episode on SLAs. Believe me, mm -hmm. folks, we'll do a whole episode on SLAs. That. We have lots of opinions on those. Uh, but in many cases, it's an element of the incident. Um, now, the incident is tracking um, you know, who's working on it, what team is it assigned to, Has it, you know, does it need to be escalated? You're able to get that whole life cycle of what did it take to resolve the incident. Now, interestingly enough, what tends to happen and what we see quite often is the difference in definition of resolution. When do I set it to resolve and when is it closed? 
And <clears throat> a lot of cases where, well, when it's fixed, okay, well, that, what does that mean exactly? There is actually a definition for that, though, right? An incident resolution is the restoration of service. So to whatever level the, the person needed. And Rob, you talked about degradation of service. One of the examples that I've used in the past is, hey, everything in Outlook is working great, but anytime I go to print, I can't print. And I need to print out whatever it is that I have. Well, Outlook's not broken, Change isn't broken, I can get emails, but my service is degraded because I can't do something I need to do. Um, so they go, oh, well, you fixed that problem. Okay, have we fixed it? Or have we simply restored service? Bubble gum, bailing wire, some shoe polish, uh, you know, a little bit of string, whatever we needed to do to get that working again. And it may be a temporary fix, it may break again. And that's where you start to get into the problem management space where you're looking at that, okay, this has happened a bunch of times. What's the root cause and how do we solve it so it doesn't come back? And we'll do a whole episode on problem management because that's its own animal. Um, but what happens is a lot of times organizations try to shoehorn all of these into the same bucket. Hey, you know, is it permanently fixed or we want to do you know, what was the root cause? That's not what incidents about incidents about what did I do to get it up and running? I leveraged this knowledge base article, which said, you know, go in, do this setting, check this box. You know, um, as IT guys, did you restart your computer? Does it magically start working correctly again? Um, you know, people people laugh about that and they, and they like fight it. They won't reboot. But a lot of times that may clear whatever the problem is. Something's hung, stuck. Um, I had it happen on my laptop the other day. There was some sort of little thing floating in the corner. That I don't know what, what it was from, or it, but it was stopping me from being able to click on my start button correctly. Um, and I'm like, what is going on? And I, so I restarted. It went away. It'll happen again. Maybe I'll research it, but a reboot fix the problem. Uh, I'm not going to stress over it. You know, we're dealing with Windows, and stuff gets cooky sometimes. But it's about that restoration of service by whatever means are required. And because the whole idea, and you said, you know, incident management is really like a firefighter. It's about the speed at which we can take action and get that user floating along again. And then request management is kind of the other side of that coin. So, Rob, talk to me a little bit about request management. Sometimes so you can confused. Yeah, so the interesting thing is there's a lot of people confuse the two. And it, at first you think, how can you confuse the two? Well, I'll give you an example of confusion. I, uh, I changed my password on Friday and it's Monday and I forget my new passwords. I'm putting in a ticket because I can't access my laptop because I can't get in so it's broken. And they mistaken that for an incident. Well, is there anything wrong with the service? No, not at all. Actually, the service did exactly what it was supposed to do locked you out because you typed your new password in five times wrong or whatever that it's set to. So when we start to look at um, request fulfillment, what can the service do for me? So when we submit a service request, we're requesting something of the service, not complaining that there's something wrong with the service or it's not working as intended or broken. So the difference between the two is I'm requesting something of the service. I need my password reset. I need an account created. I need X, Y, Z. You're utilizing the service itself. And on the flip side, if something isn't working for the service, that's where you get into something's broken or it's not working right. That would be service degradation or service disruption. And therefore, that would be your incident. But you would be surprised at how many people sort of confuse the two of them between them because I can't get into my computer. It's not working. Therefore, I'm not working. Therefore, it's an incident. That's not exactly the case. Keeping in mind when you're looking at a service, you're viewing it from the service delivery to the customer from the perspective of the company, right? From that side of it. However, the experience itself in which a customer is experiencing, you have to see it from the customer side as well. So your customer journey map needs to show you this is how I request something of the 
service. This is how I say that there's something wrong with the service. But on the flip side of that, it's from the perspective of the company. Is the service running? Is it not running? Um, is someone requesting something of the service for us to fulfill or not? And what those parameters are. And you had talked earlier about things like escalations, right? Is it a functional escalation going to a different resolver group? Or is it a hierarchical escalation? Let me talk to your boss because I'm not happy type of uh, escalation, right? And that's all part of your incident management workflow when it comes to how things go. But what happens when a tier one high level service, let's say email or the internet decides to just suddenly not work and everything, it's not that the house is on fire, the whole neighborhood's on fire. <laughs> How does that, how do we deal with that when it comes to that? And then that introduces the concept of major incident, which is a take it up a notch incident management process to deal with when you have organizationally impacting or departmentally impacting disruption of the delivery of service. And that can take its own life when it comes to what happens because it's not dealing with one incident record. It's dealing with, 50, 60 people calling in saying something's not working. Now you have a major, you have a major disruption. And so how do we deal with that? And often it's the case where we're dealing with multiple customers and not just one customer that leads to this incident managers, major incident management workflow process. Well, and, and, and with major incident, it gives that ability to roll up, um, you know, because you every call that comes in, uh, as I, I think about you know, uh, service desk operation, you know, two technicians, we think about working from home today, right? Two technicians don't know, they both just got a call about the same thing. And all of a sudden you're, and that's why in so many cases, or highly mature organizations have what's called an incident manager. And it's somebody that's looking for patterns. Okay, wait a minute, we've just in the last five minutes gotten four calls of people having email problems. Are they the same issue? Well, it looks like we have something that's happening here and we can now raise that up to the level of a major incident um, that can be put out on our portal. So people can say, hey, I've got this problem, too. They know we're aware of it. You think about calling in and they're like, we, you know, we're aware of, uh, you know, an outage of blankety blank blank. Um, OK, great. So that so it's not just me. Right. That's a lot of for a lot of folks. It's just OK. It's not. There's nothing I can do about it. It's being worked on. We're cool. We've seen organizations use many methods to communicate that out. It could be the portal. They've got uh, one of the uh, systems that um, calls everybody or sends text messages saying, "Hey, we've we've had a, we have this issue going on, or we're hearing from a number of folks. You may be unaffected, and that's fine. Um, but be be aware if." Uh, you know, all of a sudden you start having that problem It's something we're working on, and then usually a closure sort of thing. And that drives into some of the companies we partnered with to, to be able to do like Alert Ops does a great job at doing that sort of alerting and, 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 and bringing awareness to things. Um, but when you start to look at major incident, let's just roll that up, understand what's going on. Now, yes, the question we get asked all the time is, does a major incident result in a problem? Typically, yeah. Um, typically, there's a problem record because you want to, it's just something that affected enough people. There was a large disruption of service and cost of service disruption or degradation um, that we need to investigate and try to ensure it doesn't happen again. Sometimes there's not, right? Because the answer could be the, you know, if you're on Office 365, Microsoft announced they're having an outage. Well, <laughs> there's your answer right there, right? What's their analysis on post and what have they done and that's great okay it should should prevent it from happening again but it's not something that we really could control but it gives you something to communicate um but rob one of the other things we talked about too is uh, for incident request management there's a number of ways that those items may come to us to make yeah. us aware we for i sure. touched on like a self-service portal would be okay. one, but there's other methods that are a lot of times used. Definitely. So when you're looking at the incident management or request fulfillment process, and like Michael said, you know, it's sort of like two sides of the same coin. The digestion mechanisms available today, I mean, we can have self-service portals. We have emails that we can submit via email. 
know, hey, I need to have a problem or I need to do this. We also have the service desk where you pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I need this, or I'm having problems with this. Um, there's there's a lot of different digestion mechanisms that exist out there. You could have the person walking right up to your desk saying, hey, this isn't working, help me out, please. I can't get this to work. I can't get logged into this stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of different digestion mechanisms. Um, and with modern day technology in the ITSM ESM space, a lot of ways that you can receive that digestion mechanism some of it becoming far more automated than it has in the past with all this technology. And you can action that to the point where we start to look at there's even solutions uh, introducing things like AI to help solve the problems or the solutions to the incidents as they come in by searching, you know, available resources for you and suggesting you, et cetera, et cetera. And there's even self-service portals that allow you to analyze what the person has typed in the ticket and to try to determine, hey, is this going to help solve your problem? Is this what you're looking for? And you say, oh, no, it isn't. Okay, well, we'll proceed to submit the ticket. Or, oh, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Well, here's the steps on how to get around and fix this. Issue. Yeah, I was actually generating I, it. I was thinking about some of the, the newer mechanisms that we, we see today and that people are asking about, um, you know, things like chatbot type technology. Mm. Um, and uh, we, we'll, we can do a whole episode on chatbots what they are and what they aren't right that's right uh, but it, but it's something people are dabbling in live chat technology for the service desk i mean i know a lot of folks will hit <coughs> excuse me a vendor um site and you'll have a live chat capability to, to, to chat for sales it's been something that's be becoming more and more common um, especially with certain... people working remotely right live chat functionality is replacing a lot of that walk-up traffic because no one's working in an office anymore. They're all working remotely. And it we need to be able to communicate with you to tell you what's going on or I need assistance. So we're starting to see more and more of that live chat component be an element well, and, of and, and, support. And one of one of the other things I'm seeing, Rob, you know, they're not walking up to a desk. We're seeing organizations as they're retooling and getting people back in the office, providing a walk-up support mechanism. Um, yeah. where you, there's a place for you to go and you can walk up and get whatever sort of help you may need. Um, just had a conversation with a client about it um, recently um, as they're getting into, they're actually, they actually have moved and in their new location is something they want to spin up. It's something that, you know, prior to COVID, um, a number of customers had done because it gives a central point um, of access yeah. to be able to get that rather than people being hit at their cubes. Um, it, it, it gives that, that that ease. So there's all these different mechanisms, all these different ways that things may come into us. And then as we've talked about, hey, you've got a process that you're using to manage that. But it's really about restoration of service or delivery of whatever the request is. Um, it, 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 you don't get into all these other things. Those are other process areas. And it's something we wanted to highlight um, because we see stuff trying to be smushed in to one thing. And while you can do it, right, there's no rule that says you can't, right? That's what you want to do. It can be done. Why it's not a good idea is you don't get a clear picture of the different things that you may need to do, which en encompass the whole of how do we move from a reactive pure firefighting all the time is something we, we've talked about over and over. A lot of IT folks feel like a firefighter uh, every day. They go into work, they pull on their turnout gear, step into their boots, grab a fire extinguisher and put it under one arm, put a hose over the other shoulder, and run around putting fires out all day. How do we maneuver from that reactive mode to a proactive mode? And that's a leveraging the processes that make up, and in this case, we're talking about ITIL aligned processes, <clears throat> but using the processes that make up best practices, um, and ensuring that we use the processes appropriately. Um, and, and appropriately is going to be defined by you as an organization, but I'm here to tell you I've seen everybody try to cram problem management, as, which is a wholly separate thing into incident management and it always it never works 
it, it never works well because you lose fidelity on what's really happening. Because, oh, no, we're not going to close it. It's not closed until the root cause analysis is finished. Did you restore service? That's all incident is about. You know, how well do we do that versus how well do we more permanently solve problems? And as I said, we'll talk about problem management in its own episode. Um, but it, it's leveraging these processes to their very best to do for us as an organization what we need them to do. Any other thoughts, Rob? I think we covered all the stuff. We, we yeah, Rob and I'll get it. up on that soapbox. Wait till the SLA episode. You guys uh, will have a blast. We're going to talk for 20 minutes on SLAs by themselves. Underpinning contracts most... and operational contracts and everything else like that. Yeah, it gets pretty right, crazy when right. it comes to SLAs. Plus, it, it are all these pieces that make up. So go out there, folks. Keep fighting those fires. Do good incident management. Do good request management and uh you know if you do those two things well you can then build on all of your other processes and doing them well Rob, i will leave you, you with, with, I will leave okay, you with one more note uh just remember from a customer's perspective their perception of how well their it does is how reactive responsive and restorative they are in their incident management process so you could be doing lots for your customers but their perception is it broke today. I sent an email and no one helped me until Thursday. And today was the other day was a Monday when I put the ticket in, et cetera, et cetera. That mean time to resolution and that driving force of get the fire out, that is the customer's perception. So if you want to increase your CSAT scores and satisfaction on how you deliver services, make sure that you address the fires as quickly as possible. That, that about sums it up, right, Rob? It does indeed. Well, thanks for joining me today. We look Anytime, forward to seeing. Mike. Yep, we look forward to seeing you all again on another episode of Slaying Dragons with Mike and Rob. Take care, everyone. Yeah.